All right, you have a, hopefully you had a chance to look at part C, which is the overview of oral language and an overview of writing. Now we're going to jump into sort of a little bit more specific about how, what are some terms and what are some strategies that you can use to, to teach writing. Okay, so basically these are fun writing terms. Again, when you were out in your practicum, I'm just going to move myself up here. When you're doing your practicum and the teacher says, you know, I, we need to work on transcription skills, you need to know what this is. So basically, uh, transcription skills is handwriting and spelling skills to convert ideas into written letter and words. So this is, is handwriting or printing. It's also keyboard. You can also talk about, you know, how are they getting the ideas from here onto the paper. So also, I think it's important that you have a concept of this is the section where kids can invent spelling. And I know for some of you, you are twitching. But eventually, they will spell all the words words correctly. But to get their ideas down, you want to allow them to invent the spelling. And then you catch that in a mini lesson or in your conference time. Also allow kids to write in point form to draw pictures uh, in in this transcription and then they will eventually convert it into sort of a written template uh, that we that we know. Okay, so word choice again, that's a wide range of vocab in there. Uh, again, you want to you want to help them build their vocabulary so that they can use uh, more interesting words than fine and good. Right. Sentence conventions. This is the skills needed to produce coherent sentences. So they need to, again, be this is where you teach them all the grammatical issues, punctuation, capitalization, um, sentence structures, how to use nouns and verbs and adjectives in there. Again, you want to be teaching this in context. Paragraph construction skills. Well, you can probably figure that out. Constructed a relatively logically organized paragraph with a beginning, a middle, and an end, some kind of a conclusion in there. Again, they need to, to know how to create a paragraph because ultimately they'll be writing a lot of them. This is probably the, the biggest one that you need to know as an elementary uh, teacher is genre and text structure skills. So you want them to be able to recognize and reproduce key elements of different genre. So narrative, basically the purpose of narrative is to tell to recount, to describe, to express, or to entertain. So these are any kind of personal writing. These are fables, memoirs, fairy tales, fantasy. So this is narrative. These are any of their own stories that they write would be in this narrative section. We also want our kids to come out of our elementary days with an idea of what is persuasive and opinion genres. So that's, a, you want to try to persuade, to advocate for, to recommend, or to argue a point of view. And some of the, uh, some of the examples would be an opinion letter, an advertisement, a movie or a book review, um, a speech or a blog. So you're trying to persuade somebody. And informational or explanatory, this is when you're wanting to explain, to inform, to instruct, to analyze, to evaluate. So this again could be a podcast, this could be a newspaper article, this could be autobi autobiographical work, or it could be some kind of scientific experiment. So those are important that you know, understand those genres, because those are, as you know, from your romp through the Alberta uh, Education Program of Studies, these are, these are the main genres that you'll be working with. Again, you want them to have writing process skills. So again, these are terms you want them to explicitly um, teach them particular procedures around writing. So for example, you want to teach them how to just sketch, like how to, how to get those ideas down in their sketchbooks. You want to teach them how to plan, how to draft, how to revise, how to edit. Um, we have to get away from the finished product. We have to teach them the journey to get to the finished product. Okay. And self-regulation skills. This is explicitly taught skills to help students persevere, problem solve, and self-evaluate as they write. So again, not to let them get down on themselves and to say, I can't write, I'm not a writer, but we need to be teaching them, okay, you've got, you've got seven amazing stories, ideas in your sketchbook. Which one do you want to write about? And then give them those, the, the skills to persevere. Okay. 
Key to writing in elementary. Elementary kids are asked to write a lot of stories. And so you have to know the elements of the story in order to teach the children how to write a story. I liked this. I've seen this in action and it actually works really well. So this is for like your early, your early grades. So like your grade ones, your grade twos is basically you have setting, time and place, characters, problem, what happens. So events in the beginning, middle, end, and some kind of a solution. And they actually have this all laminated and on a string. So when the kids are actually reading a book or when they're starting to write, they actually have this beside them. And it's a nice visual reminder of the what do you need in, in a story. So again, that's those are some just a nice, uh, especially early, early grades of when they're starting to write. Okay, you also, as a writing teacher, have to know the story arc. Basically, almost every story that we tell as a narrative has a story arc. So we start, I'm going to get my little pencil here. We start with an exposition. So this is the background information about the protagonist, about the setting, about whatever you need to sort of give so that the reader knows what's going on. Then there's some kind of conflict. So something happens that creates a problem. Then there's rising action, so the sequence of events that happens as a result of the conflict, and they usually get more intense as they go. Then there's the climax of the story. This is the most exciting part, and it's the turning point. Then there's falling action, the events that happen after the climax. Sometimes this is very short, sometimes it's very long, right? So it's, there's not sort of a set. And then resolution, loose uh, ends tie up, and it's a peek into at how things have changed. If you want to teach story arc in a really efficient manner, I would suggest bringing in a commercial. And I've given you one here because commercials within, you know, a minute, a half or two minutes, however long they are, they go through this entire story arc. And it's a really, especially like with your four, fives and sixes, it's a really great way for them to analyze, to get the idea of a story arc and then to start to analyze commercials. Okay, so if you want to have a look at this one and it'll give you a good sense of a story arc. Okay, steps to teaching narrative. This is from one of my favorite, uh, Jennifer Gonzalez, who is called Pedagogy. So I nabbed this from her. So, uh, so we're going to go through. So how do you actually teach kids to story write? So again, show st students that stories are everywhere get them to write a few of theirs of theirs down in their sketchbook and uh, talk about that even something like uh, like like the moth where Jeff talked about one day on on the New York, New York subway it doesn't have to be anything big it just has to be yours yours to tell okay then you study the structure of the story so you basically study this structure here then you read, you read, 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 read lots of models, get the kids to read as much as they can around, around stories. They love to read your stories, right? So if you show them one of your stories, they're, they're all, they're all over that. Then do a quick story map or model for your students. So this again was one of, of Jennifer Gonzalez's stories about she would, her parents never let her stay home alone, but one night the babysitter canceled, so they, they left her alone. But then she sees a frog in the hallway and she's freaked out by frogs and all these things happen. So then she would say, this is my rising action. The climax of the story is that she's the frog out of the house with the tennis racket and then all of the falling action in there. So again, you want to, you could read them your story and then show this how you developed your story. Okay, then again, you can do a quick draft. So this can be in your in your shared or modeled time is when you just do a quick draft or you have um, you have maybe one of the students, if they have a story that they would like to help you or what they would like to use as a model, you have them come up and do it. Then you plan the pacing of the story. So I really like this visual because the bulk of the story is about seeing the frog or seeing frog trying to get it out sorry, seeing the frog, trying to get it out, and then getting it out. That's the bulk of the story. So she's she's going to do very little exposition, a little bit more on parents leave, um, a little bit here, but then the bulk of the story is 
is in the rising action and then a little bit of the falling action. And I think this is a good, so I would get your kids to actually draw that out. And again, just put in some point form good in, because then they have this to actually get them going on their story. Then they start into the long draft. Then they start into, okay, now I'm going to write, I'm going to actually write this out. Again, this is still a draft. This is not going to be the final product. This is still a draft. Then they revise right? They revise to make it better. It's something good. You revise to make it better. And this is when you workshop it. So you will pull those two or three kids in a, in a conference situation and you're like, this is amazing. Um, but I want to see more. I know that you know richer words than that. So I want you to, to add in some, some richer words. Then they do edits. So this is where, so those of you who are twitching about letting kids do invented spelling, this is then where you go after it. You go, okay, um, you've got your story, you've got it, it's, it's amazing. Now we need to make sure that, that it, it's perfect. And I can't let you publish this without, without things being spelled correctly. So that's where you go after spelling, punctuation, capitalization, all that kind of stuff. Not here, not when they're writing it. Because that will go back to that sense of fear, of that sense of, I, I'm not a writer, I can't do this. I'm just going to shut down. Okay. Then you show off. You put it together in a book. Okay. Oh, where's my book? Hang on. Just going to get my book. This is a book that the 3103 class did last year. It's, it's based on uh, Harriet, You'll Drive Me Wild. And, and I had them do, I drive my parents wild when, somebody did a little cover. And then they wrote, I drive my parents wild when they drew a little picture and I leave lots of dirty dishes in the sink. Okay, basically, look, it's stapled. It's stapled together. However, for a grade three student to look through a book and see their work when they don't believe they're a writer, this can be amazingly motivating. And then this goes on your shelf to be part of your 1500 books, which you have six of now right? This will be your seventh book. Okay, so publishing, don't, don't, um, don't think that that's a big, I gotta like send it in and I've gotta, it's gotta be a hardcover, yada, yada. Put it together, staple it, and you're, you're done. Show it off. Go down to the principal and say, I have some amazing writing and you need to hear this, and then have the kid read it or you read it, uh, you know, those kind of, those kind of things. Okay, so that's how to teach story writing. Again, kids write a ton of stories. And I think if you follow this, you will get really amazing stories versus mediocre, lame stories about squirrels. I really need to get over the squirrel thing, but it seems to be, seems to be working for me. Okay. Another key element of when you teach story is perspective of story. So the kids, again, they have to have an idea of who is telling this story. Who's telling this story? because it will change, sorry, I'm just moving my screen down here, it will absolutely change how the student writes the story. So, uh, sorry, just gonna go here. So how do our stories change when we narrate them from different points of view? So say you, you are going to, I'm just gonna circle this, say you're going to write the story from this little one's point of view. How would that be different from writing it from, I'm assuming this is a sister's point of view. How about writing it from the doll's point of view. How about writing it from the mom's point of view who might be taking the picture or the dad's point of view who's taking it, uh, uh, the picture, okay? So it will look very different. So you can see over here who should narrate which scene. So should it be Penny? Should it be Linda, the sister? Should it be mom or Holly, the cat? Maybe the cat is cruising by. But you can see then that it, the story will change and so you have to talk to your students about perspective because it's actually it's so key when they write their stories okay wow what i'm going to do now is i'm going to this is a lot this next section i'm going to um introduce sort of my favorite authors around writing i'm going to introduce some writing strategies i'm going to introduce some programs and then I'm going to let you have lots of time to, I've given you lots of websites. I want you to actually go and poke around on the websites and start to start to analyze, just like we talked about in our reading programs. You have to analyze. You can't just blindly be like, yeah, I'm going to do this. Okay. So 
Uh, we're going to look at Writer's Workshop, 6 plus 1 Traits, Day 5, Writing Essentials with, Re with Reggie Routman, Craft Lessons, Units of Study by Lucy Culkins, you've seen her before, and one of my favorites, Penny Kittle. Okay, so as we get started, whenever you start down the path of using a particular program or author, it's always a bit of a double-edged sword. So some, there's going to be some things that are great about every program and every author's ideas. And then there's going to be others that either don't fit with your ideology or they don't fit with your students. Okay, so that leaves you hopefully with lots of questions and that's good because you should question decisions. Um, you should question your decisions and you should question your programs and you need to know the ideology behind the programs. And don't just follow blindly, but you, but, um, you do need some guidance and support. And so these authors and these programs will give you that guidance and support because if you, you know, you get your grade three position and you're like, wow, I know I have to write, I have to do some stories and I have to have them write, but I don't, I don't know the specifics, sort of the minutia. These programs and writers will help you with that, with that minutia. Okay. So, but double edged sword, you have to be critical. You have to be critical in there. Don't just blindly follow. Okay, and as, as much as I would love to be able to just open up the top of your heads and just dump in information of, about the minutia of how to teach writing, um, you have to discover it and you have to rediscover it through your entire teaching career because you, there will be new things coming at you, there will be new research, there will be new ideas, new strategies, and you... Um, even though I would like to just, you know, pop up your head, put it all in there, close it up and off you go. That's not the reality. But what I'm going to do is hope uh, is, is hopefully send you down the right path. Also, one thing I hope that you take away from this next section is that simply handing out worksheets and pre-made packets there, that's not going to inspire your students to write. Do they need a couple worksheets every so often? Yeah. That's okay. Worksheets are not inherently evil. It's when that's all we do. This is not going to inspire amazing writing. This may teach a particular concept in a mini lesson, but that's it. When you are teaching writing, you must let the kids write about things that they're passionate about, that they're interested in, um, and give them real context or else, you know, Kids are just going to pound this out and then not be able to apply it. You want them to apply what you're writing, or sorry, what you're teaching to their actual writing. And this does not transfer. Okay. I, I put, um, I put this, this link to, again, Jennifer Gonzalez's Cult of Pedagogy. And it's, I don't condone the disrespect that if you scroll down to the video of this of the high school classroom i don't condone the action of the student but it's called frickin packets and he makes a comment in there about all we do is frickin packets we're not actually learning anything so it's about a minute and a half have again i don't condone how he acts but the but the thought process behind it, behind this young man is really interesting. Okay, so I believe that it's worth it. It's worth having a, a look. So just scroll down a little bit to the video. Uh, you're welcome to read the whole podcast, but you don't have to. Okay, let's jump in. So again, just a little bit of setting the stage, teaching, uh, writing the way great teachers teach. This is, these are Marilyn Prill's words. You want the idea that strong writing is powerful and it actually can be learned. So those kids who are like, I'm not a good writer. It's like, yeah, you can learn. Writing is an extension of thought and not just a record of it. So through the writing process, they should be pushing their own thought. Writing helps the writer be present and notice the world. So maybe when, if you, when you were writing your ode to your coffee, maybe you're like, hmm, I never noticed how good this smells. Or I never, I never noticed how nice uh, this particular coffee mug is to hold in my hands and how it warms my hands and that warms my heart, right? Helps them hopefully notice the world. Writers become better by writing. Gotta get kids to write. Just get them to write, 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 write as much as possible. Writing makes students read like writers. So when they read a book, 
they actually go, oh, I actually know what the writer is doing. They are writing in this genre and they're using this kind of uh, support for their ideas. So they start to notice that and writing as a practice develops one's voice. So they start to go, I am powerful. I actually have a voice that's important and it needs to be heard. Okay, so here we go. Writer's workshop format. This is, uh, if you want to have a little bit more information, go here. We looked at this in 371. I'm just going to, I just put these back on here just so you could have a little bit of a review. Writer's workshop format is probably one of the only formats that's really kind of across a lot of programs. There's not sort of one author or one program that sort of owns writer's workshop format. It's, it's really a sort of generic format. So basically mini lesson, five to 10 minutes, then there's the writing time and, and you do writing time and conference time at the same time, five to 20 minutes for K, 10 to 25 minutes for div one, 15 to 40 minutes for div two. Then there's author's chair and then there's the publishing. Okay. So I'm going to leave, whoops, I'm going to leave these for you to read on your own. So you can just kind of stop and this one. I think you can, uh, this is, I think you can figure this one out. Again, this is when they are writing. You want them to be thinking about mechanics and you want them to be editing concepts, but in small chunks. So they're only editing, maybe they're invented spelling. They're only in, they're only editing for their capitalization. Then the whole idea of revising, making writing, good writing better, more, just give it, make it more something and use the words even better. Okay. Conferencing. I think you have a pretty good idea of conferencing. Again, this is just a bit of, re of a review from 371. This is the one that I don't think I really actually got into very much. Author's chair. So this is what you do at the end of your writer's workshop is you add this in once your students can edit period and write about 15 minutes each day. You share a few of the writing projects a few of them, one or two. If you try to share all 22 in your class, it gets really boring and it takes a really long time, but one or two, they can be done in two minutes, okay? Um, share any work, share any work, whether at, even if it's just an idea, because what happens if you wait until, if you wait until they have a finished work, some kids won't ever share. So they might even just share their opening sentence or their idea, and then you support them. You, 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 that's where you're setting up a classroom of support and not fear. Okay. Use comments, uh, when, use comments such as, I love the way you described. I wondered why the character did this. Your ending really surprised me. The way you began your story was, again, give them some, some really positive aspects, but, but again, with some, with the idea of revision in there. You may want to pair one of your exceeding kids and your beginning um, writers. Oops, that should be writing writers instead of readers. Okay, so again, that will uh, that will alleviate your beginning writer from feeling like they have to do a lot um, because the exceeding writer can then read their whole story. And it, again, it just it gets them up in front sharing something. Check with the beginning writer every time. Do you want to share something today? Do you want to share your idea? If they don't, don't push them because it will become a negative space. Again, thinking about peer editing and revising, you want to get them to the point where they um, will accept peer, <coughs> excuse me, peer uh, comments. And you, again, as the teacher are important. They can inspire, you can inspire greatness or shame right? If you're like, that's a bad idea. The kid is going to be internalized. I am a bad writer. I am a bad person. I actually just um, was watching a Brene Brown uh, conference presentation on shame and how it's, we really need to be careful that we never shame our kids because they internalize that for a long, long time. Okay. Publishing. Sorry. Just going to grab a little drink here. Again, the idea of publishing is 
they should publish something after about after they've written about three or four pieces. So they've gotten they've gotten a few a few times at it, and then you publish it. Again, make it very simple. Skeleton books, staple it together. Um, and we're going to look at some of the some of the other ways that you can publish when we look at our Maverick section later in the term. Uh, try not to make illustrations the focus. Try to make the writing the focus. So don't let them spend you know. 45 minutes out of their 60 on the illustration and then just write not you know write mediocre stuff polish is not the focus again try not to make it again this this we got to have this polished writing it's about the writing and everyone does not need to publish the same number of pieces so again this is that differentiation if you're beginning student publishes one or two and you're exceeding publishes six or seven cool cool okay here we go. We're going to cruise through some of these strategies and programs. So again, I introduced this in, in um, 371, but I think it starts to take on a different, a different world now. So six plus one traits of writing. This is a tool for writing and using the writing process. It uh, grew out of teachers evaluating children's writing and identifying common characteristics of good writing. And these are the six traits. So you have that you want the kids to come up with ideas that you want them to organize you want them to have a voice so remember that's that perspective that we talked about before we want them to think about word choice sentence fluency do they have some short sentences do they have some long sentences and conventions again grammar punctuation capitalization and then the presentation is the plus one so uh, this is how the writing actually looks on the page or if they actually read it out you know what's kind of going on in there what this does is this provides a common vocabulary. So when you say, okay, what's your voice in your story? The kids don't actually have to keep thinking, okay, what is voice? It's a common, it's a common terminology that the, the students can take across any story writing. Okay. This is, oh, look at me. I'm in the, I'm in the book. Okay. Ruth Cullum is probably one of the main resource authors around the six plus one traits, and she has written trait crates, and I'm going to show you one just a sec. It's actually a crate. It's actually just a good old box of resources. So she's got all sorts of books. Oh, I actually have them out already because I'm going to do one of these with you on Monday. So this is actually a, a crate, and it has... It has all the resources in it. It has all the books. It has lesson plans. It has um, resources that you can look like if, if all the books are not in here. She has other books that you can get from other places. Again, what I want you to do is I want you to now go and have a look at you can either do a shorter article or a more comprehensive article. Uh, just have a little bit of a go with with the philosophy behind six plus one traits of writing. Okay, so stop me and go to this website and have a look around there. Welcome back. Again, Daily Five I introduced to you in 371. It is a framework for structuring literacy, so students develop lifelong habits of reading, writing, and working independently. I'm just going to go grab my book. Oh, here they are. Okay, so again, this is the Daily Five. This is Gail Mosier and Joan Moser. And again, it sets up your, if you want to use Daily Five as a writing format. Basically, it's read to self, work on writing, read it to someone, listen to reading, and word work. Again, I would stop this, go watch the video, go watch the video, and it'll give you a better sense of what Daily Five is. And there's just one more. So go watch the video and then come back and I have one more Daily Five um, website for you. Okay, so now I want you to look at the different aspects of this framework for literacy learning. So this is actually their website now. It's a little bit more framed for you as a teacher. So have a look at what, again, spend like four or five minutes uh, looking around in there. Okay. Oh, look at me. Units of study. So we looked at um, Lucy Culkin's uh, work around reading last lesson. She also has units of study for learning. 
or for learning right for learning right how to write so again i want you to go and have a little bit of a look at what she is proposing and some of these programs and again she's a very her philosophy is very much around balanced literacy so be be thinking about that that's her basic philosophy uh, in there we also have, wow, well, I just have to move around, don't I? We also have uh, craft lessons, which are Fletcher and Porta Lupi. And they, again, they're students of Lucy Culkin, so they're very much into the whole balanced literacy idea. But again, they have some, some decent resources. So again, go to this website, poke around a little bit, take some notes so that you can start to go, oh, I really like this, but I don't like this. And I would use this in my practicum, but I wouldn't use this. Start to pull it into your reality. Okay. Writing Essentials by Reggie Routman. She is one of my favorite authors around, around um, writing. She does reading and writing, but I especially like her work on, on uh, writing. And this is, this is the book that I am. Um, this is um this is not a this is not a this is not a photocopy um but i this book is in the library so i wrote down the call number there if you want to have a look in the library when you can actually get back to the library again go to her website look specifically at books and videos because she has amazing really amazing stuff she also in the writing essentials the last uh it's called teaching in action she actually has like week plans like procedural writing and you have a five-day plan for how to actually teach how to teach those things uh, um it's i, I just I, her philosophy is pretty solid and I, I she gives some pretty realistic ways of teaching she also has written this is a new this is a new series for her on kids poems so teaching kindergarten all the way up to grade six I think it's grade four is her top one for actually how to teach um, kids how to write poetry. And the next slide is I actually just took some of these from her her examples of her poetry book because again, I, I it connects to sort of our themes, our big themes that we looked at in our um, in our lesson plans. Look at this little poem. Okay, let's look at this one. Bumble is a dead bee. Bumble is a dead bee. Bumble is a dead bee. This is a kindergarten kid who this, who they scribed his poem or her poem for him or her, but this is what the child actually wrote. Look at this one though. My friend Kenton. My friend Kenton is dead. He was my best friend. My friend Kenton got hit by a car. Oh, right. So I think that uh, that we're looking at that at things that kids are actually at those big themes. You know, we're kind of like, oh, do we really want to talk about loss and death with kids? Yeah, yeah, we do because they are they are um, they're hitting it. Okay, Penny Kittle. She again is one of my absolute favorite favorite authors around writing. She writes a fair bit for. Uh, junior and senior high, but her ideas are absolutely um, attainable in elementary. So these are her two big her two big books. And she wrote, I believe each of my students must craft an individual reading life of challenge, whim, curiosity, and hunger. I believe in the collecting, noticing, living work of designing lessons to empower writers. I believe teachers provide vision for the students. We live a belief in their success every day we teach. Okay, so here she is. Um, and again, go to her website, poke around a little bit and see what her ideas around writing are. Okay, so that's it. That's all. That's all there is to teaching writing. So I, I get it. I think you are going to go back and forth between being a little scared like, I don't know anything, I don't know what to do, to being super excited when you introduce um, a concept and the kids just run with it. And then you're gonna go back to being scared. Ah, I don't know how to do the next thing, to being excited. Okay, so um, embrace both. Embrace both being scared and excited and know that if you write, if you give them choice, if you give them authentic situations for which to write, your kids will become amazing independent writers. All right. Hope you enjoyed.